Um, I think I'm the only social scientist in uh, today's speakers. I hope I'm not the only social scientist in the audience or in the hall. Um, I think my duty is to try to convince you that um, people have talked a lot about variability and heterogeneity and uh, uh, lifetime accumulation of, of, of damage. And I think my responsibility is to try to convince you that uh, one of the sources of this variability might be social. Um, uh, the, the Finnish population is aging as, as uh, all the others. And, and this slide shows the 85 plus. And you can see that uh, population forecasts uh, seem to argue that in 2040, uh, 80 plus women are actually the largest um, age group uh, in Finland. I, I, I dare to uh, argue that uh, the consequences of population ages is, sorry Jim, is not just births, deaths and mathematics. But there are various social processes that uh, will be important for the, when, when looking at the consequences of, of um, aging. And I want to draw on two examples. Uh, one relates to social determinants of, of mortality and the relationship between education and mortality, and the other re relates to uh, elderly people's living arrangements um, and the uh, use of long-term long -term care. We are really interested in these um, two factors, because as populations age, we have good reason to believe that the elderly, pop the distribution of the elderly population on this uh, dimension is also likely to change rapidly. Because of simple cohort replacement, the, uh, the, the birth cohorts that will enter old age in the decades to come will be better educated than ever before, and they will have higher incomes uh, than um, ever before. For living arrangements, uh, we believe major changes are taking place as well. Uh, partly this is driven by converging life expectancies between men and women. And for women, this may um, uh, mark um, a, a clear difference in their living, um, living arrangements. You can see here that uh, in, in uh, 1920, in, in, uh, in, in, in year 2000, uh, approximately 20% of women uh, aged over 75 lived with a partner, and that will probably radically change uh, by the year 2030. Educational, what, what would be, be interested in educational differences in particular? One is that it, it's, it's one of the major socioeconomic determinants of health. Um, uh, and as population, populations age and deaths are shifted to ever older ages, the, the action is more in, in um, when looking at social inequalities, the action is more in elderly, uh, elderly age groups. We, we suspect that some of these educational differences in health are related to uh, origins, uh, early life conditions, health behaviors and uh, material living conditions. Uh, of, of, of uh, people in different educational groups. This si slide looks at um, a, a trend that is common across most um, uh, wealthy uh, Western Northern European countries. It shows a life expectancy difference uh, between uh, higher and uh, lower edu and basic educated men and women and you can see that there are rapid inc increases in life expectancy in, in all social groups. But you can also see that uh, the better educated uh, have uh, got more gains out of this mortality decline. And social differentials are increasing uh, in the past 40 years. If one, if one takes a cross-sectional snap, you can see that, and this is an uh, on the right-hand side, it shows that uh, these differentials lead to very uh, different uh, uh, age at death distributions for the better and the less educated. As I mentioned earlier, 
we believe that lots of these different uh, or, or a part of these differentials relate to uh, early life. This slide uh, uh, looks at the study where we can estimate the uh, the um, hazard ratios between the better and less educated, and and we can see here. Uh, that uh, for those with more education, they have mortality rates roughly half of that uh, as com to co in comparison to the basic educated group. But we can also look at this in a, in a sibling fixed effects design. So we're actually calculating the same difference, uh, but this uh, time it is obtained from data where we actually compare uh, brothers uh, and sisters. And we can see that some part of this educational difference in mortality has all the, uh, early origins, both uh, social and uh, genetic. The design doesn't allow us to uh, separate these. We also know that material factors matter. And this is looking at life expectancy trends for various income groups. And uh, what is uh, puzzling with this figure is that when you look at the poorest 20% of Finns for both men and women, there is practically no gain in life expectancy over the, uh, uh, over the past 20 years. So there's a stagnant group that have not uh, uh, had any gains uh, from this um, global phenomenon of increase in life expectancy. Some of the causes of these differences can be understood from... Um, uh, in a in cost specific analysis, and you can see, and this is typical for many many countries uh, in Western Europe, that mortality decline and increasing social differentials are driven by declines in cardiovascular disease. And you can see that uh, more and more of the action is is taking place in in older ages. So you can see that uh, higher educated, um, higher income men gain more life expectancy. Uh, because of reductions in ischemic heart disease than low-income people. But you can also see that uh, the uh, low-income groups are actually losing life expectancy because of increasing uh, uh, mortality from alcohol-related conditions. So this gives the first hint that social determinants and, and, and behaviors matter. We can look at this some, the same difference between higher and lower income people here. Uh, you, you, can, you can see the uh, massive difference to begin with. It's a, it's a nine year difference um, in the, uh, in the uh, mid uh, uh, 80s, late 80s, and it increases over time to almost uh, to more than 11% for men. And going through death of Cause of death uh, certificates for underlying and contributory causes, we can identify alcohol related deaths, and then we can use indirect methods uh, based on lung cancer to, to estimate smoking related deaths. That's a method by Preston uh, uh, a couple of years back. And we can see that had there been no alcohol consumption and had there been no smoking, uh, a large section of, of these differentials would have been uh, wiped out. And actually, uh, for men and women, uh, the increase in inequalities would not have uh, been um, uh, as, as strong. And, and the contribution of alcohol and smoking is particularly strong uh, for men. I'll, I'll move to the second example, which looks at uh, living arrangements. And living arrangements are important as it's a pri for, for an elderly population, it's a primary source of uh, informal care uh, and, and social support, emotional care. And we know from previous studies that they are strongly related to institutional entry and institutional living. This looks at Finnish data again. And uh, if, we, if we take the example of men, you can see that uh, these are hazard ratios. So you can see that uh, more than 60% excess of entering into institutions if you are living alone. And the base of the bar just shows the uh, population distribution uh, of, of um, living arrangements. For women, the effect is, is smaller, but then again, there are much more women living alone. And once you enter, the sort of uh, problem is that uh, for these uh, 
men and women living alone, that once they enter, it is more difficult for uh, uh, men and women who had lived alone before entry to return back to the community. So you actually, there are higher rates of entry and lower rates of exit. And this in terms translates into longer periods of lifetime exposure to long-term care. And this is a slide that uh, um, looks at that in terms of life expectancy again. And these are life expectancies at age 65. And it looks at married uh, and, and single women for, um, for Finnish men and Finnish fi uh, women and men. And you can see the, the, the bottom line is, is really something that you would get from Statistics Finland webpage, but then it splits it up into uh, expectation of life in long-term care uh, for these different subgroups. And you can see that women's expectation of institutional care is much, much longer than men's, but also uh, their living arrangements before entry uh, or over the, life uh, over the lifetime do matter. So, um, so for men, uh, there's a double uh, e e sort of ex expectation, or, or the expectation of life in long-term care is double for those uh, uh, who are single. The, living the, the, the importance of living arrangements uh, is also seen uh, in, uh, when one looks at one of the major life events in old age, uh, and that's uh, the death of a partner. And this, this just shows hazard ratios for entry into long-term care in, 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 as a function of time after widowhood. And you can see that there is, there is a massive risk uh, in the first weeks and first months of entering into care. And, and it, the effect tails off, but it never actually um, uh, converges to one. So there is um, th a big risk uh, of long-term uh, care entry for people after widowhood. Both these processes, again, uh, translate into variability in end-of-life care. And this looks at... Uh, um, uh, it, it, it tracks for the diseased group, it tracks people backward from death and looks at their total care days. And that's a combination of long-term care and hospital care. And it tracks people how much they have used care in, in the years before death. And you can see for, for, for men and for women, and that the non-married group will be much heavier users of care at the end of life, life than the married group. And that effect um, is not just in the last year of life, but is spilled over um, the, the period that we can observe is seven years before life. The, to conclude, uh, we believe that these examples show that um, there's huge variability in the experience of old age, uh, and in particular, education and living arrangements are, are, are um, important determinants of, of, of health and mortality uh, and long-term care in aging populations. Um, it's, f from a societal point of view, these results have implications for the organization of the healthcare system and, and for, for um, health and mortality development o overall. But at the individual level, these signify a huge difference between uh, people uh, in the experience that they can uh, expect in the latter part of their lives. Thank you.